Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this video, we're going to um, add the death trigger to the enemies here. We're going to keep it real simple. Um, but before we get started with that, um, I wanted to make sure that we change this trigger here. I don't know if you already named it, but this particular trigger here was basically checking if our player had died, and if it and if it was uh, if he did, then it's going to add um, his health back. So. What I wanted to do is go ahead and just kind of rename this. Check if player died, right? Um, and then I also want to move it. I'm gonna put it in my game manager. So I'm gonna put it in the game manager, just like that. So, and the reason we're doing that is because Every scene is gonna have that, and we wanna make sure that every scene checks if the player died, right? So um, go ahead and move that to the game manager. And we're typically gonna use the game manager for a few other things as, as well, but for now, just do that. All right, cool. All right, so for our enemy, uh, what we wanna do is simply add a death trigger to them. It's pretty simple. Um, so what I'll do is go to the first enemy is dim. And I promise I will change these names. Um, and I'll go to mechanics and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to game creator and I'm going to go to trigger. And I'm just gonna rename this to death. And then for death, um, what I want to do is change it to go to stats and on attribute change. We want to change this target to game object and we're going to drag the enemy dim into that slot there, of course. And then, of course, we're going to select attribute for the health and we're going to detect on decrease. All right. Just like our player. All right. Cool. All right. So next, what we want to do is do a condition. And this condition, of course, is going to check for if the stat attribute for the game object which is this enemy, if the attribute health is less than or equal to zero. Cool. All right. And then so if that's the case, do an action. So we're going to select create action. And then what I'll do is this, uh, you can just select the action here or you can add it here. And what I'll do is I'll click on D E S for destroy. Awesome. So all we're going to do is hit destroy just like that. So what we're going to do is destroy which object we're going to destroy the enemy dim. Cool. All right. So that should work. Um, it's really simple. Um, there's not much to it and we can probably expand this. Um, but for now, uh, we're just going to destroy the prefab immediately when our uh, enemy is uh, is killed. Um, another thing I want you to take a look at is, let's see here, if you go to your project and I want you to go to your prefabs, characters, I want you to go to my attack one, two, and three. And for each attack, I want you to change the attack value to one. Okay. Change each attack to one. All right. And then so for the enemy itself, what we're going to do is select the enemy and we're going to go down and what we want to do is change the enemy's health max. We want to change the health max to three. OK. All right. So basically for every time the player hits this enemy, it's going to reduce it by one. So basically, you know, like in a platformer, like like. They'll jump on an enemy and they die from maybe one or two hits. That's pretty typical, right? So um, in this game, I don't want like to be slashing an enemy, at least, especially the ones that are kind of on the screen. They should die after one or two or three hits at the very most, right? So we want to make this guy die quicker With um, in this case. So we're going to just go ahead and set him to three. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. And then after that, let's go ahead and see how it goes. I'm going to hit play. All right, cool. All right, so let's take a look. 
one, two, three, boom, great. And so now our enemy is gone completely and uh, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so that's a simple, quick, effective way that we can get rid of an enemy uh, from the scene. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with our spider. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just duplicate this death trigger. So I'm going to do select it and do a control D and then I'm going to open up the spider and just click and drag this into the mechanics prefab there and just move it below and I'll move this up. All right, cool. And then I'm going to change it and get rid of this one. That space. All right, and so there's a couple things we need to change, obviously, right? The game object needs to be the spider. And then we have our health on decrease, so that's fine. I'm going to go to conditions, and then I'm gonna change the spider's name here as well, right? And then what else can we do? Uh, of course, the zero, and then we wanna change the game object here as well. All right, cool. All right, so that's gonna be our destroy, and it's the same thing here, right? So let's just confirm that our spider is going to die. Now he may not die because I didn't change his health. So let's actually go back really quick. And just to show you, his health I think was probably like at 100, 150. So it's not gonna barely drop. As you can see, you don't see any change because it's, it's almost literally nothing. So what we're gonna do is change the spider's health max is at 200. We're gonna change that to five, right? Because he's bigger, so I'll change that to five. All right, cool. In reality, I'm gonna even make the little box guy one and make the spider like three, right? So I think that might work. And we're gonna have to work on this guy because I know his hitbox is like somewhere else. <laughs> and I died. So now we got a game, right? <laughs> so I died trying to kill the spider and everything reset at my last checkpoint. So that worked out pretty good. Ah, I'm not gonna be able to beat my own game here. All right, cool. So he's dead. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, we got the, um, the spider's dead. And then we got that guy's dead, so it just leaves this guy over here. But we'll play with the boss later. Uh, we're just kind of getting some of these fundamental things out the way and kind of just getting something functional, right? It's not the most prettiest thing yet, but I think we can polish all of this once we get some of the basics down. Because what we want to aim for is something more like prototype, right? And then once we get the prototype and things are working, we can kind of start thinking about... How do we make them have maybe an animation or maybe we can just have a, pu a puff of smoke pop up when the enemy dies, things like that. So my goal here is really just to make sure that we have something playable and um, and of course fun because we try to make it fun first and not about the graphics just yet. Cool. So um, I think I'm going to call that it for this particular video. Um, I wanted to keep this one short and sweet and I, as you can see, I just want to touch on simple topics for each video so that we can each together move forward because making a game can be i think difficult um this will be kind of my first real like unity uh game with a character and enemies and everything so every step is intentional and everything i'm thinking about is one thing at a time so i hope that you guys are following along and i will see you guys in the next video peace Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. To stay up to date on the latest 3D platforming tutorial, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support, you can find me on Patreon, or of course, you can hit me up on Discord. I like to talk about whatever project you guys are working on. Of course, thanks for hanging with me. Your support is always appreciated. As always, remember, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.